I'm Eric Crivella. Um, I'm Vice President of ConstructX for Business Development. I'm also the Chair of the AWP Community of Business Advancement. Um, AWP CBA has 138 people or so, four subcommittees, four joint working groups, and a lot of passionate people. Right? So since we're here in Cleveland and we're sticking with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame theme here, I figured I'd quote from the Grateful Dead. I'm actually a, a deadhead and uh, every little bit of personal on me, every year I go on a, a cruise uh, in the Caribbean, this jam cruise for the past 10 years. I'm a lifer, so I'm big into music. So figure I'd give it a quote from the Grateful Dead's Eyes of the World might be appropriate here. A song goes, uh, wake up to find out that you are the eyes of the world, right? So that's where we're at today. We're here to save the planet. AWP, programmatic AWP for the win to save the planet. According to our friends at McKenzie, right, we're going to see a once-in-a-lifetime influx of capital spending, right, on physical assets, an influx of roughly $130 trillion in capital spending on decarbonization and critical infrastructure renewal projects between now and 2027, $130 trillion over five, six years. That's a lot of money. Now, McKenzie's assessment further states that few organizations today can deliver with the operational speed and efficiency that the influx of spending demands. I should fix this. Sure. Apologies. So, and we all know the score. Capital project delivery is consistently late and over budget. Typically, schedule delays equate to six to 24 months, the average cost overrun is 79%, and some segments are significantly worse than others, right? In, in North America, the average time on tools is around 37%. In other regions, it's around 30%. It's pretty horrible, right? So out of a 10-hour day, just under four hours, right? So we can do better. Compared to historical norms, AWP has been proven to improve field productivity and reduce the total install cost by up to 10%. It's foundational to digital engineering, integrated materials management, integrated project delivery, smart contracts, and digital twins. And 10% is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the savings, right? 10% of $130 trillion is a huge number. Even 1% is a, of 130 trillion equates to huge savings and a ton more of critical renewable projects and infrastructure capital projects, right? Global adoption of AWP has been remarkable and it's been exciting to be part of the ride. We have Dow, Shell, ExxonMobil, Lindy, Lyondell Bissell, Eastman, Air Products, Valet, and many other owners as well as all the major EPCs have picked up on AWP, right? But there's a lot more that we need to do to streamline and to accelerate the adoption. Uh, it's not just enough that what we have here, we have the responsibility and the obligation to steward the best practice to help build more productively in a more sustainable manner to save the planet. And hence, the programmatic AWP for the win theme. Today, we're gonna share an early win from our colleagues at Shell, and I'm gonna hand the presentation over to Martin Swain from Shell to provide an overview of his, their AWP program and their involvement in CII's AWP research and initiatives. After Martin's presentation, I'll present a few slides on CII's AWP strategy initiatives and enlist you into the AWP community of business advancement and we'll leave some time for questions. So, Martin. Thank you, Eric. Okay, no rock and roll introduction here, no music. <laughs> What's going on here? Anyway, Eric, thank you very much. Thank you, CNI, it's CII. It's great to be back. It's great to be back at conference. Um, we've done video conference for a few years with t-shirts and shorts, but it's great to be back in person. 
great to be back with friends from the industry. So I really thank you for that. So I will introduce myself because it was a bit short there. So Martin Swain, um, I'll do the clicker, shall I? There we go. Martin Swain, I look after digital construction in Shell. And with my colleague, I think he's there somewhere in the darkness, Jay Moser, um, he looks after construction. We both look after uh, AWP, one of our tasks, AWP program in Shell. It's just us. Okay, there is not a massive team, it's us. We influence other people, we work with our partners in the supply chains uh, to drive AWP into our projects. Okay, I have to show this. If you've ever seen any of my presentations, you probably want to read that for the next 25 minutes. But <laughs> basically it says, what you're about to hear is possibly the thoughts of Martin Swain and not necessarily the thoughts of the company. Okay, let's move on. So when I first started this journey, <laughs> Oh, you didn't read it all, sorry. Um, when I first started this journey, I naively thought this was it. The journey, yeah, Martin, can you go and do this? I'll tell you what, what the journey was in a minute. I thought, yes, pretty straight road. I come from projects. I come from engineering. I come from engineering into construction. So that's when I always turned up at site. So I knew kind of like, this is what I need to do, set some milestones, set a clear goal. You've got two years to do the program. Job done, easy, I thought. The reality, this is the journey. There you go, that's good. I'm glad you laughed, because that is the laughing bit to settle them down. So this is the journey, okay? And I was on my own at the beginning of this, okay? So uh, I asked, well, give me some examples of a programmatic approach. Nothing. <laughs> I asked some examples of some white papers, nothing. So for the first year, we spent some time doing research, uh, talking to our supply chain, talking to CII, et cetera, and to sort of learn about what we needed to do. The, uh, because where we'd come from was a simplistic project approach. I come from a project, it was quite easy. The original driver was, we do really cool things in engineering, 3D models, et cetera. That's my background with instrumentation, 3D models. We want to push that into construction. We were doing some great things with, in Aberdeen with Brent Decom, and uh, New Orleans office were doing some great things with the Olympus platforms. But they wanted that more at a programmatic level, right, more than a project. We were already doing things at what we called then digital asset, now that we call digital twin, uh, with some of our um, simulation software. But in reality, when you need to do a program, these are the factors that really come to play, okay? One project, stakeholders, they're fairly easy to influence. Um, but when you look at a programmatic approach, you really need to understand a supplier ecosystem. We didn't really take that into account in the early deployments. So how do the suppliers work? What's their ecosystem? What's in it for them? What's the drivers, et cetera? Data standards. We kind of had data standards. We were not good at putting data standard requirements into our contracts. So we kind of got what we got. Um, we were probably in the early days, we didn't have the concept of data platforms. Today we do. Uh, we have a very strong understanding of what a data platform is. And we're getting far better with data standards. But in the early days, data standards were something went, ah, well, it's all about the tech, basically. That's where we were, okay? And what we didn't understand was, we thought everybody would go, this is cool, let's all go in that direction. So not just our supply chain people, but our own people. And everyone went, no, I'm not so sure. I quite like doing what I'm doing. This is 10 years ago. We were high oil, high oil price at the time. Everyone was going quite well. So we had lots of different people working for us in our supply chains. We had lots of different cultures. Um, it, when we come to AWP, we're learning from obviously the US and the Canadian markets, and we're trying to take that and deploy that around the world. So we have, we have the US culture, we have the Canadian culture, we have the European culture, we have our Asian markets culture. So we have lots of different cultures, and within cultures of countries, of ways of doing construction, we also have the cultures of company cultures, how they do things, what's in it for them. And then obviously we have governance. How do we steer this dream that we want to do to put a deploying of, uh, at the time, technology into uh, construction. And also, the key thing that we learn, which this man on my right hand side to me, Marty, he goes, it's not about technology. I said, it is, Eric, it's about tech. That's what the management want to see. They want to see flashy 3D models in construction. He goes, man, it's about AWP. And I went, really? Okay, well, we'll just play along with that. At the time, it was workplace planning, but it was merging into AWP. So back in the day when we first started this, we already had noising on uh, noises about AWP. And you can look at that. If you get AWP right in engineering, this is where the data is created. 
then it flows across uh, through construction. Okay, so I'll go back to the timeline. So the original programmatic approach that I started back in 2012, 2013, was about getting technology into construction. I see Todd Sutton sitting in the front there, so with Zachary and people like that, we were learning back in the days of CII and Fiatech, et cetera. We found 272 as a research topic that kind of described workplace planning. Um, and we had some quick wins. We were deployed on Prelude, for example. We started deploying a standard set of technology. You can see their technology focused at the bottom. And uh, got some great shots, got some great wins on those early mega projects. Mega projects in Shell is where the money is, so they can fund this, you know, this programmatic approach. And uh, we got some slightly smaller projects. There you saw Geismar A04 here in the US and Pernis SDA in, in Netherlands. They, they adopted the technology, but also we bumped into their supply chain that also adopted the process. About the 2015 mark, we also realized that uh, it wasn't so much about technology and it wasn't about workplace planning, it was about AWP. And uh, you saw that we kind of started swapping over at that point to learn more of that. So our projects that went on from 2015 really took more of an AWP approach. By, obviously, we were deployed on capital projects. As I said, they have the money. The trouble with a capital project, a large capital project, is that they take a long time to get to construction and they take a long time to learn the values of it. So 2017, uh, early 2018, we started seeing the results of, the, uh, of the, uh, the early pilots. And that told us a key thing. So we deployed pilots, as I said, at Geismo. We also de deployed pilots in Oman and uh, with CCC. And uh, consistently, what came back was it was about the people, it was about the process, and it was about people's understanding of that, training, and it was about technology delivered. So that triangle now changed from trying to technology at the top to the bottom, and it was about the people understanding the process. That's when we had those ones deployed. We saw um, fantastic results where we deployed it where people didn't quite get it, uh, and we, we had a poor process, and the supply chain that we worked with at that time, it kind of, it, it was a failure. So. 2018, you can say the second phase of the program approached. Um, so when Jay took the role of uh, PT for construction, and we refocused the whole thing on um, the AWP process. Um, and, and critical, we started going to conferences like the AWP conference and learning from others. So ExxonMobil, um, Chevron, our EPC partners, uh, we started talking to people, learning, sharing our results, good and bad, you know, where we, where we a benefit where we failed, etc. But learning from others, okay, and we reset, reset the uh, AWP program again. We opted, um, not really by choice. We opted that uh, we wouldn't have a massive team in Shell. We would keep it small and work with our supply chain partners. So from 2018 onwards, we really became um, people and process focused. People first, okay. Now, we like a one-pager at Shell. This is actually a fantastic example of it. So the, the program has clear goals. What's the problem statement at the top? Where are we trying to change? We had a clear mission statement. We had an industry standard abbreviation, uh, abbreviation for AWP, definition, sorry, for AWP. And that's critical. We've taken the CAI uh, definition for AWP. That means we're, we are anchoring ourselves not in a Shell understanding of AWP, but more of an industry standard of AWP, okay? We don't want to invent a shell version of it. We want to make sure that we're anchored with our supply chain in the industry. And we want to move the whole industry because that's how we're going to benefit from everything. And also we set out with a clear set of benefits of what we were going to chase. We're also always chasing the 25% productivity improvement. Okay, so where have we come to with people and process? So obviously 2019 to 2022, we had a bit of a blip there in the middle, as we all know. So, um, but actually, and all credit to Jay and, and the, his uh, team behind him, uh, developing the body of knowledge. So how can we educate people? How can we, where can we point them to, so if you wanna learn about AWP, you come to our body of knowledge, you come to the AWP uh, playbooks, and uh, you come to the data support AWP. Data standards are critical. And if you're there at San Diego with Jay, where he banged on the table like uh, Tom Cruise, and he went, I need data standards. We are not leaving this room until we get data standards. That's what the owner demands. He did do that, actually, yeah. I wasn't there, unfortunately. San Diego was one I missed. 
But uh, data standards are everything. That's what we need to learn. That's what we need to put into contracts, similar to the earlier session there. So therefore, our contractors can uh, get on with the work. Now, you may think that, uh, well, Shell doesn't do construction, but we do do construction in our plants, um, and uh, we do construction management, or we're influencing our supply chain to do, do deliver construction on our behalf. So data standards, setting, setting that requirement to the top is critical. We now deployed on smaller projects back in the 2020, 2021. Quick learnings on those smaller projects enabled us to improve. And now we're back onto capital projects. We're on, I think we have AWP specified in contracts on most capital projects in Shell. So we are now ramping significantly up that curve. But that's all because we've now got this significant body of knowledge based on CII, and that's where we can point people to. Now, a word on quick on technology. So as I said, the original technology, first generation, it didn't let us down. It actually did some great things. We got some great results. Um, and uh, it proved that cloud technology would work. It never, it never crashed, um, even though lots of people were very scared about cloud back in sort of 2014, 2015. We're now on second generation. Second generation, which is uh, lower cost clouds, vastly improved deployment time, so we can deploy normally in about, uh, um, from beginning to end in about four weeks. Our 4D technology is fantastic. Um, and our AWP technology is uh, yeah, fantastic as well. We have graphics, but now we have dashboard. We have granular dashboard data, which, um, so you can look at the data regardless whether you like a dashboard or you like a uh, 4D graphic. Um, you'll see those two words merging. So we're probably now moving to third generation, where hopefully we can start influencing the uh, technology into the engineering systems, and we can merge truly 4D dynamic modeling with uh, the AWP systems. But the future. I'm nearly done, actually, Jack. Are we good? That's OK. Cool. And uh, so the future. So I think with the future, uh, first and foremost, we can't forget the primary objectives. OK, so our objectives are HSE improvements. Where can we take man hours out of the job in order to keep people safe? Where can we do work um, off plot in sheds, et cetera, in a safer environment? Um, where can we understand where work is going to happen at height? That all is can be built from the AWP system, so we understand where those work fronts are going to be, when they're going to overlap each other, so we can basically replan that work. Key, key requirement is productivity improvement and schedule certainty. Productivity improvement is because we know, and um, from the sessions yesterday, we know there's a, a decrease in uh, labor market, so we have to get more product with the people that we've got available to us. And schedule certainty is critical to us, um, especially as we move forward with these um, new energy projects, because they need to deliver uh, quicker, faster, better. And cost reduction. Cost reduction is, is key for us to remove the waste of the job. You know, we don't want to waste time looking for materials, et cetera. We need to make sure that everything's connected and we can do more projects with the money that we have available. We get those things right, then we kind of move on to the next world uh, of automation. Uh, data standards getting our requirements and then that flowing through with data standards, it's critical to link it to artificial intelligence, machine learning. And uh, obviously we had a big session on that yesterday, but for us, it's, you look at the end of the job on a mega project, there is so much data, we just don't have the people there to do the data crunching to come up with uh, the best optimum um, path of completions, for example. So um, only an AI engine can really help us data crunch that uh, to give us the best insights about what we should be working on, where's those gotchas, that valve missing, et cetera, which is going to delay the whole system handover, et cetera. Then eventually, maybe past my, my time, but the legacy is then, obviously, the robotics will build um, the, the future plants, maybe in the sheds, in modules, et cetera, to uh, an AWP data standard, I think. And then finally, the summary. Okay, I think the, one of the biggest key learnings is is working together. So we are active party members of uh, research topics, 390J, 391, I'm on the AI one, and our colleague uh, David Kerr is on the uh, modularization uh, research topic. But the key thing is to learn from others, uh, use your body of knowledge, based on industry standards, and make sure you bring everybody with you. So make sure your people are trained in what AWP is, and make sure they understand what the process is, make sure they understand the end game, and make sure that uh, obviously the technology you choose works, is robust, and uh, is future proof. Thank you very much, Eric. Over to you. Excellent.
Well, thank you, Martin. It's been a long journey. It has. I can recall back in 2012, um, they referred to 4D, 5D for three or four years, maybe longer. Just getting them to switch to work-based planning and AWP was uh, a journey. <laughs> but, and thanks, Shell and Jay and a lot of the other owners in the room for their leadership in the AWP. Without you guys banging your your fists on the table saying we need this or that, it wouldn't have got done, all right? So thank you guys. All right, so let me provide you with a short and high level overview of CII's AWP strategy and some of our initiatives. As Martin described, programmatic AWP is a journey that requires investment. There's no big easy button, beep, you know, to magically save 10% off the total installed cost. It takes a multi-horizon plan, programmatic approach, an investment in people, process, and technology to develop a culture of respect, accountability, productivity, and transparency. CII has what we would call a, an AWP in a box strategy, right? We're trying to get the scalable deployments to facilitate the programmatic adoption of AWP best practice. The aspiration is to provide member companies with the tools they need to get up to speed quickly and quickly apply AWP onto their projects. Easier said than done. There are four pillars to this strategy. Education is a leading indicator of success. So we know we need to prioritize the AWP body of knowledge. My colleague Robin Mickelson has done a, a very good job as the chair of the AWP community of practice uh, subcommittee for uh, knowledge management. So he's been stewarding that, and that's, it's also a priority that we also develop the educational tools and resources. And we all know it's all about the data, right? Fundamentally, we need to advance the battle against bad data and to drive interoperability, integration, automation, and the orchestration of digital workflows. Uh, the, the, via data requirements and digital threads, right? Why should an owner uh, have to give out the uh, three different specs to their EPC, right? Why can't we just have, you know, we have one for 3D modeling, we have one for handover and CFOS, we have another one for AWP. We need to harmonize those specs. We need to be able to give those out to an EPC and say, this is our expectations, right? But we need to be able to take advantage of data specs, digital threads, AI, machine learning, to enable digital ecosystems designed for manufacturer assembly, integrated project delivery, smart contracts, and in general, just to build at scale. Everybody says they do AWP, but very few owner operators and EPCs are very mature when you start looking at the specific capabilities. And we have a capabilities matrix within the uh, CBA in order to monitor that. What we need to do is we need to be able to define what good looks like, right? We need to spec that into our contracts and consistently measure that and measure those results and, and frame it in an agile, continuous and improvement approach, right? That's key for us. Lastly, we all know that AWP is just one piece of the puzzle. We know that we have to bring these communities together. Right? So the best practices, the communities, the project execution methodologies, how do we get to this next level of a more optimized next generation of project delivery? Right? We've got to bring these communities together. We want to rationalize the various methodologies and facilitate an active dialogue with these other um, functions, communities, best practices, and bring those together. Right? The AWP plus Lean joint working group is a great example of that strategy that's going gangbusters, right? So we have a, a conference coming up um, related to AWP plus Lean and the next generation project delivery in September in Phoenix. So we're excited to bring those communities together. We're also excited to bring the communities within CII together. On a monthly basis, uh, we have meetings and we try to collaborate with our other CBA partners. So let's quickly also cover a couple of the AWP research and initiatives. Martin touched on a couple of them. Over the past few years, the big focus has been on educational tools and resources, continuing to gather the evidence and case studies and building out the community, right? In terms of AWP research, 
we have RT390, the uh, AWP execution guide to frame what good looks like and to put that into contracts and to get good alignment and consistent deployments that yield benefits. So if we start to get more consistent about this, we should get a lot better at it. We also have the RT391, which Martin, myself, and uh, several folks in here, Kenny Kelly and uh, Chris, are part of that group in terms of defining uh, the use cases for artificial intelligence and machine learning and, um, and what those use cases would look like, the best ones for us to study going forward. And we also have a new research team, Research Team 405, in which Fernando Espana, my colleague Fernando Espana is the chair of that, that's gonna look at leveraging culture in order to drive success, culture and behavior to drive success in AWP. So that's another big one. And we have, on the educational resources, we have the AWP Data Requirements Joint Working Group just recently published another update of their AWP Data Requirements Guide. So those, that group is doing really well. Um, and of course, the, the next version of the AWP BOC, the body of knowledge, is set to come out in the October timeframe. The next version provides some critical updates to the AWP model and best practice that was first published back in 2012, 2013 or so, right? So this provides a valuable update there. We also have a ton of other tools, the ROI calculator, capabilities assessment, selection tools, maturity tools, the Education and Outreach Subcommittee has produced some really good videos, uh, great and informative videos along those lines. We also have some cool stuff that was done last year. Uh, scaffolding equates to 20% of the direct man hours on a project. So we had the joint working group that produced a fabulous report and infographic on scaffold and access management. So this year we have a few new initiatives. Uh, we did a refresh of the AWP portion of the CII website to make it easier to find uh, the resources and the case studies, et cetera. Then we also kicked off an initiative with Vishal from CII in order to kind of continue the effort from Research Team 319 in validating the AWP best practice. So we've set up a, a case study database to continue that evidence gathering effort. So, and this year we started the AWP for Engineering Joint Working Group, right? To sort out how we can collaborate and better drive buy-in and alignment to en uh, from engineering around the path of construction. AWP should be a benefit for engineering, not something that adds one to 2% to the total installed cost of the project. And this is a great group of people. The AWP um, for, for engineering is a great group of people we had uh, close to 50 people on Monday for a session from one to three, and it was very fruitful. So uh, look for good things from this group. Um, we also had a, an a, a workshop in the afternoon related to, a, um, in the morning, excuse me, for AI and machine learning uh, that had a similar amount of people. So there's a lot of good energy related to the AWP CBA and our various initiatives. So, I'll, I want to finish with a couple other things. Um, at the fall CII uh, Board of Advisors meeting in Austin, we were talking before a, um, a deployment committee meeting, and Steve Cabano from, from Pathfinder said something that stuck with me. He said something to the effect, we need to, aren't, aren't robots supposed to take over the world, and let's work backwards from the robots. Well, that seems pretty far off. The robots seem... Maybe that's 10 years at least in terms of being off, right? So many of our projects have yet to fully embrace the basic blocking and tackling of work packaging and constraint management. You know, shame on us, but this, this, we have a lot of work to do. If you think about your projects, how many of your projects can you honestly say you have a three week look ahead of constraint free work packages? I think if you're honest in your assessment, there's probably not many that have that nice of a buffer of a backlog of constraint-free work packages. But the reality is, is if you don't have a three-week look ahead of constraint-free work packages, you're gonna have schedule delays. That's just the reality that we face, right? So if we're working backwards from the robots, it seems like we have a long, windy road to go to get there, and we really need to ramp things up right now, 
right? So there's this concept of, hey, let's do this living lab. How do we take the CBA and make it into a living lab, right? So the, the, for the deployment of AWP and related best practices, let's go do one the right way in each one of these segments. Let's measure the results and let's keep the execution guide a living document. Let's keep it up to date. Let's create playbooks. If it's 80% you know, is, is going to be overlap or you know, baseline and then 20% is specific to each segment, let's do these, measure it, and combine our resources together and collaborate and integrate and change the way that we have owners and EPCs and technology vendors working together to deliver these projects and share the risk reward right, in an agile, continuous improvement manner. So this will build towards the, the theme of the integrated project delivery in which AWP is a baseline for that, fundamental for that. So let's continue to advance AWP in oil, gas, and chemical sectors, but let's also prioritize collaborating and driving adoption in semiconductor chip plants, data centers, renewables, healthcare facilities, and infrastructure projects. Let's define what AWP in a box means for each one of those segments and go do it. And then add in other bad best practices, integrated materials management, design for manufacturer assembly, smart contracts, and do it in a much more strategic and accelerated manner. Who wants to go do one the right way, right? Let's measure the results and get a repeatable program for CII and for your organizations. Let's rise to the challenge that our situation with the climate uh, demands and, and rise to the challenge of this influx of investment money, capital project spending over the next few years demands and improve our critical infrastructure and decarbonize our planet. Programmatic AWP to save the planet. Programmatic AWP for the win. So. All right. <laughs> Eric. Eric, thank you, Martin. Thank you so much. One, one, one second before you. If, <laughs> I'm, my job is to recruit all of you to participate. And if not you personally, you volunteered somebody to jump in here and be a part of the AWP CBA. We have a lot going on, but we can't do it without the volunteers, without passionate people to make this happen. Come share your passion to build the future of construction. Can you tell there's a passion there? <laughs> oh my man, this is great. Thank you so much for the update. Thank you for sharing your journey. Martin, I have a couple questions. We have a couple minutes. This is important because some people are new, I'm sure, and some may not know what advanced work packaging is. You know for sure, I know, but for those who don't know, what is, how is AWP different from traditional project delivery? What's your elevator pitch? 30 seconds. Rigorous work packaging and constraint management. Uh, just work package everything, do constraint management against everything, have release plans. Am I missing anything? I think you've got everything. Yeah, I, I always view it as a systematic breakdown of the project, CWA, CWP, IWP, so we can break the job down right down to the trade who's actually going to do it. It can fix, uh, align with the, uh, the schedule and uh, therefore we can track everything, pieces of equipment, we know exactly when they're gonna be installed, uh, what year, et cetera, and, uh, and track productivity through it. So if it's so beneficial, what has been preventing greater adoption of AWP? That's what the CBA is all about, right? So we're, we're, we're stopping the barriers or trying to you know, eliminate the barriers that prevent greater adoption. Um, one of the biggest areas is that AWP for engineering, right? So um, it's a big barrier. Engineering doesn't want to do AWP because it, it forces them to change the way that they do their work based around the path of construction. We're taking them off of optimizing their portion of the work and saying, hey, look at the bigger picture. Let's do it based off the path of construction. But there's technology solutions along those lines. But that's one of the biggest barriers along those lines is getting engineering to realize that there's a benefit in this. And one of, um, you know, we have a case study along these lines that looks at it in terms of uh, one of the Gulf Coast uh, projects used, a, uh, uh, used AWP for the modularization effort they, they largely did in China. And on this project, you know, they did AWP 
They got it right on for the modularization effort. They showed a 12% improvement in productivity. But more importantly, the, the EPC that had a lump sum uh, turnkey contract on there saw double digit profit margin. So the EPC saw double digit profit margin on a lump sum turnkey project. They accrued the benefits from using AWP. That's when we'll see the barriers start going away, is when engineering can actually realize that this is a benefit for them. It's not a cost adder. You do have to have spend more resources up front, and owners need to give the leeway to allow more investment up front on the, to do the uh, uh, investment in the engineering up front, but it's not one to 2% of the TIC. It's, it's solving that barrier of uh, getting engineering on board and thinking this is a benefit, not a cost adder. Very Sorry good. for the long answer. So, last question for you, Martin, is, yeah. and this just came. This is awesome. I mean, I'm reading it exactly. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, no. How do I get started? Oh, okay. How do you get started? The, the key thing to getting started is, first of all, to come to CI, again, a body of knowledge. Educate your people. So, start off with a very high level what is AWP, awareness sessions. And it's got to go through your, your uh, whole levels of management. Senior management have got to understand it. They've got to get behind it. But you've got to bring right down to the trade levels. They've got to understand it. Once you've got that kind of awareness moving, then obviously then move into the training material, get people to do the right training modules. They are available. There's plenty of industry trainers now that we, we work with. And once you've got that piece, then you can start rolling the technology. Don't ever roll technology first and then try and catch up. That's when it goes wrong. And I would say to add back to that comment there about the, uh, what's slowing up, mm. I, I see from the projects that we've gone through is, is uh, a, a general fear of data, okay? Because at CWA, you can block the, your plot plan out quite easily. There's my work fronts, the big areas. CWPs, I get that. That's the piping, that's the steel work, that's the civils. When you get down to installation work packages, it's a lot of data and it scares people. And those early pilots that we talked about, we kind of only did piping and steel because people wouldn't go near the other trades because it was too much data. They feared it was going to grow too many people processing data, trying to m create work packages. Uh, so that's what we need to get through. And that's where, the, that's where now robust technology really helps. Um, but getting AWP deployed right at the early stages in uh, what we call in defined stages of the project. So getting everyone understanding it, getting that engineering split up, as Eric says, then people start getting a bit more comfortable with it. We have to do, at the end of the day, you have to do construction. It, it's a difficult job, but uh, this helps it give it that kind of DNA flow through. Excellent. Martin, Eric, thank you so much. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. it.